Hello, welcome back. Guess what we're doing? We're playing Hexen and we're taking this. That was a very anticlimactic thing to have just happened. Uh oh. Oh, less of this though. Only just got here. These were obviously switches. Now, ah, do you remember I was saying that? Oh Jesus. <laughs> not not specifically that, but that also. Um in Doom, you could have hidden switches, much like these ones. But the uh, the sides of the sector that was down still activated as switches. If you could stand next to them, you, as long as you knew the switch was there, you wouldn't have to find the switch that raised it. Um, which worked the first time you saw the game because you didn't know about that. But it only takes a little bit of inside baseball about the game, and all of a sudden, why did nothing die? By the way, I an entire break for shot. Um, a little bit of inside baseball, and you know how the game works. You know that if you activate side, um, it will. You only have to be in range of it. It's not really counting. Yeah, but you can see now these are going up and down like normally. Oh, you still can. Interesting. It's going to say you can't pull them, but what I do happen to know, because uh, this is one of the scripts that I first learned to program from, the one that does this, is popping up these at random, and you have to pull the one that is up. You can use the side, right, but it has no effect. You have to pull the one that is currently raised, and I think you have to pull them all. So let's, uh, let's wait for you. See, now that I've it, that thing spawned right in my face, which is very rude. I dodge backwards into that. This is another Isaac trick. Um, it doesn't do anything unless it's raised, which is extra cool. That sounds like there's a bad guy in here, but there's no room for that. I think as long as you pulled them all. There you go. Um, then the center one will rise. In fact, the switch is gone. Did you see that? Check the video. That is no longer a switch. The texture has changed. That is one of the things that I first, you know, I don't deparse it. Yeah, it stops being a switch um, because the script was right there in plain text for me to read. It's not like I had to reverse engineer it or anything. But I reverse engineered it in the sense that I wanted to know how it worked, and I didn't know how it works, and I read it, and I you know, put two and two and several more twos together and came up with the sum that I was expecting. It was very cool to have that. Um, oh, today I bought the Humble Indie uh, Game Creators Bundle. And if you spend $15 on that, I think there may be a couple more days left if you want to get that. Um, when I say it, I'm obviously not affiliated with those people in any way, but I wanted to talk about it. Um, I'm not sure how much how longer there is to get that, especially by the time this video goes up. It may have already ended. It has the source code to some games if you spend $15. Or, like, if you pay the $15 amount. I think it was like $12 that you had to spend. $15 is more than 12 This is one of the things I learned when reading this script. And I thought of that because that's basically the modern version of this. Obviously, I already had Hexen and you, I paid for it, at least my dad did, the Doom Enhanced Editing Program that allowed me to. You know, look at these maps and take them apart. One of the things I really liked about Unreal was the fact that the... Uh, well, there's two things. First of all, the editor came with it, which was unheard of. In id games, the editor was always a separate, um, separate thing entirely. And obviously, as I said, I paid for that. But no, Unreal came with Unreal Ed straight off the bat. Very cool. Excuse me, princess. Where did you come from? I was literally right there. And all of a sudden you're telling me you're a newcomer to this? No, no, no. Those old bees have been here forever. Whew. Again with the Isaac tricks, dodging backwards into something that you've already avoided. You don't know the Binding of Isaac, by the way. I do have another series on that. Which is uh, probably my favourite game of all time right now. It's a very... Scatological, you know, it's very graphical in you know. some of its themes. It's an adult themed game, um, even though it's a very childlike, cartoonish 
aesthetic, and that's entirely on purpose, in fact. I think Edmund McMillan was interviewed and was literally said as much that the uh, aesthetic of the game offsets the themes of the game, which are you know, very powerful, things like child abuse and, and um, miscarriage and horrible things like that. But it's incredibly good fun. And I have 500 hours in the game now. I'm still really, really bad at it. Uh, it's, it's an arcade sort of game. If you want to see me dodging backwards into things all the damn time and get insulted with my own inability to play a computer game, definitely check that out. Um, quick plug for my own content there. It's perfectly allowed. Don't very much mind. Thank you for this HP, I appreciate it. So I was just thinking that because I learned, I basically learned to program making scripts for Hexen, and I learned to make scripts for Hexen by deparsing scripts for Hexen, or reading existing scripts for Hexen, and I read existing scripts for Hexen because my dad was kind enough to pay for uh, Deep. And um, yeah, the reason I was going about Unreal Ed is the fact that um, uh, not having to pay for the editor for the game levels really got me quite deeply into uh, mapping. We have a part of Wraith Verge, which gave us probably just a load of mana. It's quite nice. Um, the, the other thing about Unreal that I thought was really cool, which is true of Hex and Doom as well, which is that, uh, but not true of its later games, of the Quake engines. That was very mean of you, that's it. And now I'm going to have to take two of these. Was that the levels that you play in Unreal are the exact ones that you edit. It's a serious level that I was telling you about the other episode. In the previous sub, I think. Um, and the reason that's good is that it means that every map that's ever distributed, including the ones that come with the game, if you want to know how it works, you just open it up in the editor and look. Apart from the fact that you don't have to compile it. I mean, who ever heard of compiling a map, right? Um, apart from in the literal sense of you would put when you put something together, that's called compiling. But I mean, in the sense, in the computing sense of compiling. Oh, oh my fuck! <laughs> Did you expect that? That was a uh, goo. I just got squished by goo. I was gonna say this looks like um, it's a trap, and then I immediately died to that trap. So uh, thank you for watching. I will never play this game again. I appreciate all your comments. Uh, I will probably do all this boring old shit again. I will talk to myself about all the stuff I just talked to you about to keep myself entertained. But uh, yeah, I'll see you on the other side. Just before I trigger that trap. Uh, or possibly just after I trigger it. And then just before I trigger it for a third time. See you in a minute. My point is... You'd think after 500 odd hours in a game, you'd be good at it. But I'm not. Right. What happened here? Well, I'm gonna. I've saved it. Obviously, because I saved Scum at this sort of time. I'm gonna step in there and see what happens. And then we're gonna reload, no doubt. Are you ready? Go. This is very cool. So, what they did here. Oh shit, we have to press that. Haha, <laughs> very clever. Um, they changed the texture of the floor, which is something you couldn't do in um, a new room. A resort room, anyway. So, what happened here? Apart from the fact that bastard's there. Uh, is. They changed the texture of the floor and then turned it into a slowly moving lift. Very cool. Of course, when it gets to the top, you die. You don't drown. So you, I was just given the entirety of Wraith Verge. So, if we didn't have it then, we'd have it now, right? And then... You press this button and this sort of drain opens. That's really cool. Does it do anything? No. So, obviously, without the ability to have um, terrain under or above other terrain, there's no way you could really turn that into a pipe. That's a really cool sort of trap type mechanism going on there. Still looking for this fourth gear. And I 
think that's basically it for this level, at least for now. But there are more sewers. And I believe that that um, portal there may be the entrance to them. Incidentally, it's 37 mana for a standard tier weapon. And considerably more than that for part of Wraith Verge of both types. So I'm going to not pick up that piece of Wraith Verge just now. Let's see what's in here. Oh, this looks like the sewers to me. Oh no, this is where we were. Interesting. Did that get us anything? Did we did we gain anything? Did we, are we better off now? Can we break this dude? Ah, oh, he's dead though. If you're interested, uh, Damien of 42% health name did list the names of the characters. I mentioned a few episodes ago now that I was basically playing the unnamed player. Um, which seems fair to say because of how my player has no name when I die in the death message, but I wonder what that area did. That's up here. So we get across there if we so chose, but I don't really care to. Oh, fuck this. <laughs> I can't be arsed with that, that noise. Um, but I don't have them to hand. And I don't really like the sound of my own voice as much as I may be talkative person on channel enough to go and find the video where uh, he mentioned it and uh, I assume he and um, you know, read them out for you. But they're there. And presumably in the wiki as well which does exist. Come on, I've pressed these four things. There must be something else going on. Let's have a look outside. That's where we came in. Uh, as the Bee Gees. So, a long time before me. So, probably don't want to be going that way. It's going to be the fun part of the game where we wander around looking. Ah, there we go. This is a trap. You can tell. What do you do? You check the map. There can be nothing behind it because of the nature of the engine. Therefore, we go backwards. Do we just tank it? I guess we just tank it. Ow. That's alright, we've still got 21 of these quartz plastics left. Uh, I'm glad I found it before we had to run around and like talk shop about something else from the uh, id slash raven world. Let's remove this forwards. No. It does uh, move forward, but every half hour? Okay. Platform has lowered in the tower. Presumably the tower. Yeah, that other lift is going. Ah, I see. And that gives us access to this other thingy. Which will teleport us to... Well, yeah, obviously I'm going to break... This is the gibbet, right? Yeah. Look at me with my uh, amazing memory from... 21 years ago. I'm pretty sure I played this in 1995, or at least, you know, 96 or 97. Oh, shit, man. Uh, yeah, this is a short work story. Let's try and get as many things in range as we can. Oh, get out of my way. Well, you've done it to yourself. Oh, that's really cool. I've not realised that before. But it spawns you in the same place you left. Provided you waited for the thing to go up, which I didn't. Probably use one of those because this thing shoot, steps up and uh, shoots me again. I'm a goner. Where you at? I know you didn't, Dad. Where you got? Come on now. You're in here somewhere. Well, you missed your chance to die with honor. There's a portal there, which I assume these mean uh, tell me where it goes, but I don't honestly know whether that's true. Oh, I remember this. There's a library with secrets in it. Use all the green mana because there's blue mana. Bloody idea. Now, how about you use the blue mana? Try not to take any damage if you can avoid it. Step one of survival. Don't take the damage in the first place. Step two. Recover from the damage offensively. Step three. Find HP somewhere. 
Can't really min max that any further. Oh, I remember this bit. Look at this fucking room. It's amazing. I'm tempted to use Wraith Thirds, but at the same time, I wonder whether. Oh. That's not the sort of thing you would have done in 1995, I'll tell you that for sure. No, two. Good, good. Wraith Thirds did do something, actually. I was kind of expecting it to be somewhat thwarted by the pillars, but it looks like we've got some decent work out. Oh, got hit. I was terrified to jump over this when I first encountered it. Look at it. And this time I sort of did a strafe jump and just... Do you remember strafe jumping? In Quake 2? Obviously it was rocket jumping in Quake 1 and Quake 2. Yes. Um, but I remember strafe jumping in Quake 2. Or I remember being told that you could do it and accidentally succeeding at it exactly once. And it always struck me as something like, you know in Smash Bros, everyone's played Smash Bros. Well. Uh, you've played Smash Bros. Actually trying to do a Smash move in Smash Bros, right? You've been there. Um, I couldn't, I couldn't understand what my friends were telling me about the sort of mechanics of this Smash move. And you had to tap A in direction at nearly the same time, but not quite at the same time. It's very fiddly. And you get the hang of it, and you're like, oh shit, how could I not do this before? I suspect that is what strafe jumping is like, except I never quite got from what the hell are you talking about to suddenly getting it and going intuitively, I understand now. So it did take me a long time, even in Smash Bros, to go from what the hell are you talking about to, oh, I get it. You're going to turn around because you're scared of behind you. you might as well. uh, I guess you do keep shooting because uh, if you think there's something behind you, you want to shoot it, right? So now we uh, go back around here. I should empty this place out before we, uh, before we try emptying anything. I uh, don't want to pick that up just yet. Empty the surrounding out. Get some HP from these jokers. These so-and-sos. Get your Wraith Verge out. Whack it in here. Boom. There we go. Too little too late, Sunshine. You have no chance to survive. Make your GT time. Ooh, hello. It wasn't a very effective Wraith Verge. Let's have another one. It's a cool name as well. Wraith Verge. Do you reckon... I don't know. I was wondering whether you had to hit it, but then of course you wouldn't be able to do that with a mage, would you? So don't walk backwards and fall off the thing, right? It was a bad idea last time. It's probably going to be a bad idea to do it again. So that's basically what I'm saying. Is there's a lot to be said. It's the same episode. There's a lot to be said for... You know, being open with source. Which is why we have the term open source. But... Um, Great, <laughs> thanks. Even if it's not literally the entire source of your entire application, your game, you know, it's fair to say that you might want to sell your software for financial gain because you've spent time doing it. And if I were to make something artistic like a game rather than functional, I would probably want to sell it rather than... Uh, Rather than put it open source on GitHub or something, but my point is showing people how you did like the, the next level down, basically your your maps and your scripts and things like that from within the game. Letting people get at that information is really valuable, especially to kids. <laughs> Believe it or not, was, how old would I have been? Like thirteen or fourteen? Not even that. Can't subtract to anyone. I was early teens. Why would I do anything other than shoot? Um, it was, it was so good having that information. And it, at the time, I was perfectly capable of absorbing it. You know, I could, I could spend the brain power figuring out how these things work without asking for any help. Um, other than, you know, first principles, being able to read English, basically. Uh, uh, and the time and the willingness to hack at it. And it's something that you can definitely lose. And I, I did. Quite considerably. If 
for the longest time. And it's, when, if life is my job, I'd be fed up with it because I would A, have had to do it from scratch. Are you still killing things? Die it. Excuse me, princess. Um, I, I would hate to do this in my job. But that kind of... <laughs> what? Okay. That's interesting. Um, that's kind of a, a truism because anything that you do for work, anything that you do for pay, inevitably becomes soul crushing. Which may seem a little bit harsh, a little bit... Oh, okay, thank you. Um, a little bit overbearing. You know, maybe it's a little bit too mean, I guess I should say. I don't, uh, probably don't need to go as far as saying actually soul crushing, but at the same time, the reason that people lose faith in their work and their job is because the work that they do, they used to have passion for, and then clients came along and ruined it. Because if you, if you get paid to do something, you do it to a specification. If you don't get paid to do something, do it to your specification, which means it's a creation of your. People often forget. Uh, and it's, it's all too easy to say, you know, it's a job, get on with it. But if you take something that you really love doing as your job, you have to be prepared for the fact that when people ask you to do things that are ridiculous, you're going to have to do it anyway. You're going to want to retaliate and say, no, that's nonsense, don't be silly. And then do it anyway. Because they're paying your bills. There you go. That was 18 mana. I think what I'm going to do is let them die. And then in the next episode, we're going to come back, jump in here, uh, and take care of what's left and see what we can find. I think we have to find a head of that Yorick statue. Um, but until then, thank you for watching. I do appreciate all the comments that you give me, uh, and uh, I appreciate you sharing my videos too, which apparently happens. So thank you for watching, thank you for sharing, thank you for engaging, and I'll see you next time.